morning. Welcome to our morning devotion. We want to thank God for the far that he has brought us. We thank God for the new day. We said yesterday we should not give, take anything for granted because we know that all happens because God has allowed it to happen. It is God's will that you and I may be alive today. It is God's will that you and I may meet at this platform as we continue to hear his word and also to learn from him about thanksgiving. And we said it is good to give thanks to God at all times in all situations. Regardless of whatever is happening, let us give thanks because God is in control. Let us give thanks to God for our country and also for our leaders. Let us give thanks to God because of our economy. Let us give thanks to God even in those difficult situations that when we give thanks to God, we learn that one will have peace. We'll gain peace, that peace that comes from God. We will not be anxious about anything. We will not worry about anything because we'll have put all our trust in him. Because he is in control, then we can be at peace. Because he is working on it, then we have nothing to worry. We have nothing to be anxious. And we learned that when we give thanks to God, number two, we draw near to him. We have access to him, a direct access to him, where we can have him, we can have his presence and also have him reveal more and more about our lives, about our future and what he has planned for us because God will be our friend and we'll be close to him. And today we continue with this theme of thanksgiving and I just want us to look at why or some of the reasons why we fail to give thanks to God. Why people fail to give thanks to God. Why people fail to appreciate God for what he has done in their lives. We know that at times we are tempted not to give thanks. At times we want to give thanks but we fail because of some reasons. And number one is comparison. When we compare ourselves with others, when we compare our, our businesses with other people's businesses, when we compare our marriages with other people's marriages, then at times we may feel that we are not where we want us to be. And we wish that we would be at a different place with different people, at a different job, different from what we have. It is a temptation that we have and we are reminded today that don't wish your life was different from what you are living. When you wish that you are different, then you will not appreciate what you have. God knows what is best for us and God created you as a unique person with your uniqueness, knowing that that is the best for you. God gave you maybe a spouse and those children knowing that they were the best for you. God has today, at this time, given you that job, granted you those opportunities because he knows they are the best for you. When we understand that God desires the best for us and God has given us the best, then we will appreciate that indeed it has come from him. We should see that God has given us everything and what we have, we have received from him. And everything good, comes from God. And everything that comes from God is good. Once we realize that everything that comes from God is good, we'll be able to give thanks to him. But look at us. We are tempted to compare. We'll compare your marriage with another marriage. And you will fail to give thanks to God for your marriage. Fail to give thanks to God for your family. Fail to give thanks to God for your nation. Because you feel it is not doing better or well compared to another nation, to another family, to another business, to other people's children. Give thanks to God for your children because you know they came from God and everything that comes from God is good and perfect. When we realize that God has given us everything that we have and we overcome the temptation of comparison, then we'll be able to give thanks to God. We are tempted when we are coming to give thanks to God. We start thinking about other people and what they are giving thanks to God for. If today you are coming to give thanks to God because he has healed you, and then on your way you come and find someone giving thanks to God because he has also been healed, we may be, you may have been suffering different diseases, 
you may have had different illnesses. The level of illness may also be different, but that should not make you feel like he deserves to give thanks. I don't deserve to give thanks because mine was not as bad as his, was not as urgent as his, was not as an emergency as his. Because when God blesses us, he gives us the best. When he does, he does the best for you. When he heals, he has healed you as a person. You should not see that indeed, it's like I've not been healed because someone else has been healed more or better than I am. In fact, at times when I read the story in Luke 17, 1 to 19, about the 10 lepers, it could be the other nine compared themselves, knowing that they were Jews, and one was a Samaritan. If God, if Jesus could heal us all, and this one is an outcast, Comparing yourself, why should I go back and give thanks to God if indeed the healing is not only for the Jews, but also for the Gentiles, but also for the Samaritan, but also for the outcast. And at times we are tempted to do the same. That when our children do good and we feel that they have performed very well and we feel like we want to go and give thanks to God, on your way you realize that those you thought may fail have also passed and you feel now, why should I go to give thanks? It seems the exam was so easy. It seems everyone passed. The same happens with us when we are even ill, when we are going through difficult situations, and you make a vow that God, if you deliver me from this situation, I'll give you thanks. Only for him to deliver everyone in the same situation, and you feel if he delivered everyone, then why should I go and give thanks? And yet, it was not that special. That is what we feel, that it was not that special. It was not that good. It was not because everyone else has received the same. When we compare our blessings with others, we may take them for granted. We may even feel that we are not blessed enough. When you compare your children with other people, when you compare your business with other companies, when we compare our lives with other people's lives, we may fail to give thanks to God. And God will be hurt knowing that he has given you, he has given you everything good for you to come and give thanks. We are tempted to be selfish, that we can only give thanks to God when he's doing it for us alone and not anyone else. We also are so greedy that we feel we can only give thanks to God when we have it all and others are missing. It is a sin that we should overcome, that when you feel like you want to give thanks, if you start looking at other people's blessings, then you'll be selfish and feel like you should be the only one who is blessed and you should also be, you will also be greedy like you want everything for you. And you will be tempted not to give thanks to God because you realize that he has blessed others more than you. He has healed others more than you. He has come through for others the same way he came through for you. He has blessed other people's children the same way he's blessing your children. Other businesses are doing good as your business is doing good. When you look around, the truth is you will see that God is working. He's not only working for me, but he's also working for you. He's not only working for us as a church, but he's also working in other churches. If we were to compare ourselves, then we may feel inadequate. But when we realize and look back and count our blessings, we realize that God has done so much for us. He has done so much for our families. He has done so much for our children. If only we can just stop, look back and count our blessings. Because God blesses us differently with a purpose and with a reason. Remember, he made you as a unique person. Your family is unique from the other. You should not compare yourself with others. We want to give thanks when we are the only ones who are blessed. But God desires that we all ex experience his blessings, his peace and his love. It is God's desire that all marriages may work. It is God's desire that all children may be blessed. At different times, they will be blessed. 
There will be challenges. We will overcome the challenges. But when we take it as a person, as a person with your family, and see, sit down and see what God has done for you without comparing yourself with others, then you'll be able to come before him and give thanks to God. If we learn to appreciate what we have on an individual level and seeing what God has done for us individually, let us stop that temptation of comparing ourselves. Because when we compare ourselves, the truth is we may not be where we want to be, but we are where God desires us to be. You are with that family because God blessed you with that family. You are with that spouse because God blessed you with the best. What you have, the place you live, the area you are in, the place you work, it is the best for now because it comes from God. Give thanks to God for that opportunity as you also continue praying and waiting for other opportunities. Give thanks to God for the children we have because the truth is they have come from God. Give thanks to God for this nation, for the leaders we have, because we are reminded that what we have has come from God and that is good and perfect. It may not be working best for us, but because God is in control and allowed everything to happen according to his will, then we'll give thanks because we know it is him who has made everything to be how it is. May God help us that we may overcome the temptation of comparison and desire to live a life that we can have a relationship with God as individuals, with our families, a personal relationship with him that we can appreciate his love, we can appreciate his goodness. Let us overcome the temptation and the sin of selfishness that we are so selfish not to give thanks. At times we are tempted not to give thanks because we want everything for us. And it is a temptation, in fact, when it comes to giving the thanksgiving offering. We want to receive, but we don't want to give. We want to be appreciated, but we don't want to appreciate others. It is that when we appreciate others, we are also appreciated. When we show thanks to others, they also appreciate us. When we overcome greed, then we'll be able to share what we have with others. When we talk about giving thanks, it's not only coming before God and giving thanks, but also showing that love, that thanksgiving, that gratitude by how we treat God's people. Because how we treat God's people tells us, tells more about ourselves. We cannot give thanks to God God we have not seen if we cannot appreciate men, men we live and we sing. Let us learn to give thanks to those who are around us that we can appreciate they are doing better. If they are doing better than us, let us give thanks and say thank you that you have done this. If they give us something, yes, let us say thank you. If they have done exemplarily well, it is good to tell them thank you and also congratulations. Because when we have a thankful heart, then we'll be able also to come before him with a thankful heart. When we have learned how to give thanks to one another, then we'll be able to come before God and give thanks. Knowing that he allowed Jesus Christ to die on the cross for us and for our sins so that we may be free, then there is every reason to give thanks to God. But how often do we even feel like this salvation should be ours alone and not others? That we feel we are the only ones entitled for that salvation. We cannot give thanks for the salvation when he saves those we feel that are not entitled to salvation. The same we said with the Jew and the Samaritan. They felt like the healing was supposed to be theirs alone and no one else. And when others received the same kind of blessing, they felt there was no reason to give thanks to God. When we look at our families and we see like others have been blessed and we feel they were not entitled to be blessed because maybe we feel or we think they are not as close to God as we are, then we take our blessings for granted 
and we even feel that God has not done enough because he was supposed to do better. He was supposed to be greater than those we are comparing ourselves with. May God help us that we may desire to be blessed of him, but also desire to pray and thank God for others that he may also come through for them. When he's blessing others, let us give thanks to God because it also reminds us that he's working, that he is not asleep, that miracles continue to happen. When you feel like God is silent, just look around and see the things he's doing to other people and give thanks to him, knowing that he is doing for them today and tomorrow it will be your day. Let us learn to appreciate God and his works, not only in our lives, but also in the lives of others. That will help us overcome the spirit of comparison. We will be able to overcome the temptation of comparing ourselves with others so that we fail to give thanks. When we overcome, then we'll not only give thanks to God for our lives, but also for the lives of others, for the lives of our enemies, for the lives of our, of our neighbors, for everything that is happening around us. Even at difficult times, we will not compare our lives, our businesses, our nation, our church with others, but we'll appreciate that it may not be happening to us, but it is happening with others. I'll give thanks to God because God is blessing you. I'll give thanks to God because God is coming through to you, through you. I'll give thanks to God because your children are being blessed and they are flourishing and God is uplifting them because I know once he does it for them, then he's also reminding me that he is doing for us as, an, as a church, as a nation, as a family. And it also gives us hope that God is working and God is thinking about us. May God help us that we give thanks to God for us, for others, for our nation, for our church, without comparing ourselves, but realizing that when he works for others, he's also working for us because it is God's work to bless us all. In the name of God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.